Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhalt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. It's not deja vu. It's Huskers freshmen taking home hardware yet again. And these names you're about to hear will certainly sound familiar. Bryce McGowan's won his fifth Big Ten Freshman of the Week this season as he registered 17 points, 4.5 rebounds, and a steal and a half per game in contests against Michigan and Northwestern last week. Women's basketball standout forward Alexis Markowski won her sixth Big Ten Freshman of the Week award. This after averaging 14 points, 10.3 rebounds, and 1.3 steals across three games last week. And lastly, in men's uh, gymnastics, Chris Heiser won his second career Big Ten Freshman of the Week award, topping his career best from last week, a score on the floor, 13.45, with a score this week of 13.85 this past Saturday against Penn State. That now helps Nebraska uh, to the second best team floor score in the country, right behind Oklahoma with a score of 68.233. All three of those freshmen won the same award last week, so all three duplicate the feat, and that is a good note here heading into this coming week of a very busy Huskers athletic schedule. As we were talking about awards, Nebraska track and field earned some well-deserved recognition. It has now risen to 11th in the latest USTFCCCA National Rating Index, their highest mark since 2016. And Huskers Gymnastics is in action tonight, looking to keep some of that good momentum going as they take on Ohio State at 7 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Also at 7 p.m. tonight, Fred Hoiberg will join us as he will host his Nebraska basketball show. We'll also hear from his video coordinator, Matt Holt. And we'll flip it over to the uh, rest of college basketball, where tonight there are no Big Ten men's games in action, but in the top 25, producer Andrews Duke Blue Devils are just getting started against Virginia. And then at 8, number 4, Arizona battles Arizona State, while also at 8, number 8, Kansas is on the road to take on number 20. Texas. On the women's side in the Big Ten, one game in action currently up here in the Acres Broadcast Center on the screens. It's Ohio State rallying back in the second half right now in the third quarter. It's about six minutes to go. 38-35. Rutgers had led at half by a decent margin. They were up eight, but right out of the gate here in this third quarter, Ohio State means business as they look to fend off the upset. In the top 25, another game going on currently. It's number five, NC State. And they lead Georgia Tech, number 11 in the country, 30-22. to 22. And then just underway, number 14, LSU, currently battling Ole Miss. Lastly, some NFL news. Two head coaching hires were announced today. The Saints just announced that they will promote their defensive coordinator, Dennis Allen, to head coach. And earlier today, the Houston Texans announced that Lovey Smith will be their head coach moving forward. That's the ticker. My name's Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Rebound, Widener. Huskers, five-point lead in the ball. Widener right down the middle of the lane, running one hand. Baker, good. Allison Widener, stand up up for Nebraska. He's got seven. Tries to jam it. Shot is blocked by Trey McGowan. Run down by Webster. What a defensive play. Here comes Trey Webster, Trey McGowan's to Bryce McGowan's the drive, puts it up and in. Holy cow, the offensive play of the year for Nebraska. Craft in the deep right corner, bounces Great back pass. up. Moriarty scores off the assist from Monica Stewart and another timeout by Wisconsin. Great activity by Kendall Moriarty. And the return pass on the give and go, the skip pass, deep right corner, three on the way. Trey got it down. The tracer with a tray. Markowski for three, and Alexis Threekowski. Another Threekowski for Alexis. That, she hardly looked. <laughs> Holy cow. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to another week of sports. Highly. It's Super Bowl week. Got the big game coming up on Sunday. I'm sure everybody's got their parties planned and the menu all set to watch the Rams and the Bengals in that game i'd love to go to media day for super bowl i think it'd be fun to go and listen in on everybody talking yeah and i mean it just with the nfl it's just so much looser and they can say things that they don't feel so tight and all of that but greg rewind back to august if someone would have told you it would have been the rams and the Bengals, what would no you way. have said rams maybe yeah. not the Bengals. crazy not the Bengals. in fact some people i think sports illustrator somebody had picked the rams to be there but so there i'm not shocked that they are the Bengals, absolutely. Nobody yeah. saw that coming. I mean, and I, I kind of want them to win. I do, I do too. I mean, I said I 
from the beginning of the playoffs that I was on uh, the Cincinnati bandwagon from uh, here on out. So I didn't, I didn't think that they could beat the Chiefs, but they did. And so here I am. I've, I've still got my team in the Super Bowl. Are you a Pro Bowl guy? No, terrible. Yeah, I won't I, even watch it. I don't either. I don't even turn it on. And somebody else who's not a fan is going to join us yeah. here a little bit. Jeremiah yeah. going to be here in a few minutes. I can't wait to talk to him. He's been like traveling around the world, hasn't he? I know. He? He's been a busy little bee. Busy big bee. Big, Sorry. Busy big bee. He's <laughs> losing weight, though. He's not as big as he used to be. <laughs> He's still a big dude. That's it. My parents, when they saw him for the first time, they're like, God, he's big. He looks like he could still play. I mean, even though he's slimmed down, but, I mean, that's a Big Ten offensive lineman yeah. for you compared yeah. to what, you know, my parents were used to watching, the, just the differences with uh, the Big Ten and the Big 12 offensive linemen. Well, don't butter him up too much. we got to bring him back to earth. He'll be here in a couple minutes. We'll talk a lot of things with him about what he's been doing. He's been out going to some of these college all-star games, and good for JoJo Dolman, Cam Tater, Britt. They both played in the Senior Bowl over the weekend. JoJo had a couple of tackles in that game. We'll get Jeremiah's take on that and all the portal news that's been around the Nebraska football team. So looking forward to chatting with him here in a couple of minutes. Also tonight, it's our men's basketball show for the week. The head coach, Fred Hoiberg, will be here. And that was, that was a hard one to watch Saturday. It was a really, it was a step back, no doubt, for the Huskers after they played so well at Michigan and, and, and some of the games before that, the Rutgers game at home, the Wisconsin game at home. Those were good, tight games. It was not that way Saturday. Just the the effort was not very good, to be honest. It wasn't very good. They basically did the opposite of what we said, that this team's confidence is growing and they're playing better and they're continuing to to be uh, to fight in games. And, boy, it, yeah, it just was really disappointing. It's like, uh, you know, Northwestern got hot and then they kind of gave up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it just it got ugly really quickly and they couldn't ever even – get back into it. They just kept adding to the lead. I, I told the guys earlier today, the only player that I thought really brought it was CJ. I thought he yeah, played CJ really played well. hard and he was looking for a shot. He was stepping into a shot. He hit his first three, right? Hit his first three, which is usually an indicator of what he's going right. to be like. Yep. And, and he played well, but the rest of them just looked the step slow. And I, I know the coach is disappointed. Uh, so we'll have the coach here in hour number two to talk about that. The women also uh, took one on the chin yesterday. Couldn't find the bucket. Boy, I, I'm not sure Jazz Shelley made a shot in the game yesterday. And that was a, and, and you knew it was going to be difficult. Maryland's a really good team on the road. You knew that would be tough, but I'm sure they're disappointed. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a struggle. And it wasn't like um, – they weren't getting good looks. I know Maryland is a good defensive team. I know they have length and athleticism, but they were getting some good shots that typically go for the team. That's what I, I tweeted at Copeman. I was like, hey, can you take the lid off our bucket, please? Because, I mean, we just couldn't get everything, anything to go. And then, you know, we're kind of out of sorts and throwing it out of bounds. And I, I think maybe that stretch game's caught up to this team a little bit. They might have been a little bit gassed. Could be. And that's not a good sign because they've got a bunch more coming up their way. They're playing at Ohio State on Thursday, at Illinois Saturday, and then back here to play Indiana next Monday. At least it is a little bit longer stretch before they get back to it. I mean, even between Thursday and Sunday, you got right. an extra day, but it's still you're traveling. At least now you get, you know, Sunday to Thursday, maybe a little bit of – a breather, but yeah, I mean, hopefully they can get their legs underneath them and, and uh, get back rolling, but I don't expect that team to play like that again. I mean, it's just you're going to have a, an off night, and then they were probably a little bit tired after the stretch that they went through, but I, I feel like they, they lost a little bit of um, the attacking nature that we've seen out of this team so much that, you know, they just, they attack, and then, you know, it, things didn't go well initially, and they kind of um, got a little bit timid, I thought, and then started throwing the ball away. But I think they'll, you know, that we've seen time and time again this team learns from some of the things that they battle through, and I think they'll come out better for it. They will. We'll have our in the Amy Williams radio show tomorrow night, so hour two tomorrow night. We've not had her in for a couple of weeks because of all the games and travel and COVID, the shutdown. So it's been a while since we've heard from her, so we'll have her tomorrow night. So Coach Hoiberg tonight, Coach Williams tomorrow night, and again, they're back on the road at Ohio State on Thursday. They're not coming back to Lincoln after that game. They're going to stay on the road because they play that makeup game on Saturday with the Fighting Illini. So the next two on the road, then they're back home to play that really good Indiana team next Monday night. I watched a lot of skating over the weekend. I watched a lot of the Olympics, and last night particularly was a lot of skating going on, and we were talking before the show, Team USA has only gotten three medals so far, all three silvers. Um, 
but it's it's been the games are in full bore. It's getting going, and I more and more people are starting to jump into it now. That's in day four or five. You know, um, I was kind of thinking about this compared to maybe the Summer Olympics. I feel like the Winter Olympics are way more dangerous. They are. I mean, all those sleds and bobsleds. I some. I saw a bad bad ball. Um, I think it was who was it? It was. Um, on the slalom for the women's, and I mean it was. She broke a, her leg. Yeah, it was. She was a USA. I saw it live. It, yeah. it was ugly. And then um, I was watching the uh, speed skating, and that I mean wipeout after wipeout after wipeout. It was kind of crazy, but um, it, yeah, I've kind of gotten into it a little bit. Tonight, ten o'clock for you, Night Owls. Team USA plays Team Canada in hockey. That's on the women's side. This was the gold medal match four years ago. These are probably the two favorites to win the gold in Beijing. So 10 o'clock tonight, they'll drop the puck between Team USA and Canada. So I might have stay up late tonight and watch some of that. You know, I just, I feel like it's so sad. I mean, just whether it's celebrating a medal or even just the devastation of that injury that no families are there. So, you know, you, you, a family's watching that on TV, an injury like that, and then having to sit back and watch and hopefully hear yeah. soon what's going on, can't be there. Is that, I mean, that was a, who knows how long she's going to be out, if she'll be able to return, what's going on. I mean, all these questions. But then also you got those first-time Olympians and, and celebrating the medals. That's the only sad part. When you see, when they go to the interviews and you see them kind of go to the families back at home, I mean, it's it's cool to see the interaction, but it also kind of makes me sad that they're not there with it's, them. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Same thing happened in the summer games in Tokyo that, that can't be there. They're all sitting on a couch in Yorba Linda, California, or wherever it may be, and they can't be there to hug their, their kid and somebody who they've supported took them to all these practice sessions and all that thing throughout their life, and they can't be there to watch it. What would, what would be the least likely sport you would do? We know curling would be the sport you would uh, yeah, do. That's what, do. what would be the least? I, any of those jump things where you, the big air where they're coming down, they're launching themselves up in the I could not do that. I, after watching the giant slalom, the, I am out on that. Boy, they were going 85 yeah. miles per hour down the mountain there's a lot of those sports i would not want to try no the luge i'm not laying backwards on a sled like that and doing that thing so yeah, yeah. it's wild i mean and crash after crash and they just get back up and keep doing it crazy stuff right when we signed off friday night husker wrestling was about to take the match at the devaney center against third rank michigan then they then they wrestled number one penn state yesterday huskers came up short jessica in both but they won in both against Michigan and Penn State, they won four of the ten matches, so almost a 50-50 split. I got to think Coach Manning pretty happy with what he saw over the weekend. Yeah, I think both of them came down to, you know, still could have won in the last two matches of, of the duel and um, some big wins and some competitive, boy, some great wrestling. Sure was. I mean, so it was really exciting to watch, and they fought and they competed. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there are some teams that are kind of probably already – Maybe at their peak, I think Nebraska is still getting to their peak. So, you know, I think it's okay that as long as you're kind of fighting and right there and, and figuring out, is they're going to see these guys again? Oh, you yeah. You know, so. Here. Here and then in probably after that. In, in the NCAAs. Yeah, in the NCAAs. So a little promo time for everybody. The Big Ten wrestling meet is in Lincoln in March at PBA, not Devaney, but at PBA. And so tickets are on sale for that now. It is the creme de la creme of the Big Ten Conference for Wrestling. Huskers will be home at Devaney next Sunday. We're open to talk to Ridge Lovett, who's having a really good season for Nebraska, and I think he has a chance to win a national title. We're going to talk to him a little bit later on in the week. Uh, women's gym going on tonight. If you're want to, looking for something to do on a Monday night, it's uh, the Devaney Center out there for them as they will be taking on Ohio State. Uh, 7 o'clock is when that will get going. The men had a very impressive performance Saturday night. Not only were the men good, but they had the greatest in attendance. Yeah, the GOAT. How about Simone Biles coming to Lincoln? I did not know she had that tight of a connection with one of the Husker men gymnasts, but she was there, took a lot of pictures, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of snaps of her around town. You know, she um, is such a good supporter of the athletes that she kind of becomes close with. I've seen her travel and post pictures with, I mean, she came to Oklahoma when, when Maggie Nichols, who was one of her best friends, I know she's traveled to a lot of the different places of her teammates on Team USA. And I think she tries to go and support and also kind of help grow awareness and, and excitement. Because, you know, say I know that people were disappointed that she couldn't, um, that she didn't end up competing this summer in the, uh, didn't end up finishing with the all around. But, um, you know, she knows the responsibility that she has and how important her voice is to speaking up for some of the um, 
wrong things about the sport, but also how much she can help grow the sport. And so she really handles her responsibility really admirably. And the way that she travels and tries to continue to grow up the sport and, and hype it up and, and hype up her teammates and support because, I mean, obviously – she didn't, doesn't need to go watch gymnastics. I mean, that's what she does all the time. But the fact she she does it and, and enjoys it and supports, I think, speaks really highly of, of Simone Biles. Some of her Olympic teammates are competing collegiately. One at UCLA, one at Auburn, I think. Utah and Auburn. Utah. But, uh, so I watched that on Saturday night. It was Utah and UCLA. So it was Grace McCollum and Jordan then Childs? Jordan Childs. Yeah, yeah. And it was a battle between the two of them. It was really fun to That's watch. That's great. Yeah. Good stuff there. All right. So, yeah, women's gym tonight, 7 o'clock. If you kind of looking for something to do tonight, zip on out there. Those are believe both never... of them got perfect tens, by the way. They did. Yeah, yeah, in that meet. So. And, hey, if you've not been to a women's gymnastics meet in person, they are a blast. I they really are. I would wholeheartedly recommend you go see that. All right, those are the topics we're dealing with here on the on the program tonight. If you want to be a part of it, 402-413-2400. Call, fire off a text. Uh, we're up on the YouTube channel as well. If you want to jump in there and converse with some fellow Huskers, you can certainly do that. Time to tell you that Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have... Your utility line's marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. We're back with the big guy, Jeremiah, next. Ford has something for everyone. Discover the all-new 2022 F-150 Ranger or Maverick. From the affordable 2022 Ford Maverick to the capable 2022 Ford F-150, all built to help you make the most of your work week or weekend. Our knowledgeable sales team is eager to help you find a vehicle with the features you want. Plus, shop, finance, and buy your way online at woodhouseford.com or one of our three convenient Ford dealerships. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The university has a new undergraduate business and law major. Students majoring in business and law are learning to use legal knowledge to better solve business challenges. They are also gaining skills in regulatory compliance, financial services, securities regulation, and corporate social responsibility. Upon graduation, they will boost the state's talent pool in these critical areas of expertise. To Wiltshire, right side to Bryce, spins right off a screen from Walker, shoots a long three, got it. Bryce McGowan's the Huskers Radio Network is your source for wall-to-wall -wall Nebraska basketball coverage, and it continues on Wednesday as Bryce McGowan's and the Huskers host Minnesota at PBA. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 p.m. Central with tip-off at 7. Tune in to your local affiliate or by visiting Huskers.com or using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne, Nebraska Athletics is proud to introduce the 255 Collection. With the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride, 255 was designed with the fan in mind. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere, from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident, looking good and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. This isn't the start. Before I got here, I started training. And before that, I did something to my back. But my first move was Athletico Physical Therapy. 
That's where I'd eventually end up, so why not start there? I mean, my therapist immediately found the source of my pain. These are the same physical therapists who work with elite marathon runners. So soon, I was back to running, but without pain. <sighs> you got this. It all starts at Athletico. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean? Which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles. Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. Back on our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. And Start we welcome on board the program Jeremiah Searles. Where, where are you tonight? Are you, are you in Lincoln? <laughs> I am. I'm, in, I'm actually in, in Lincoln until Friday, but then I leave again Friday. But it is good to be home for a little bit. Hey, I saw your wife made moose lasagna. You'd post it on yes. your uh, social media. How, how good was that? Oh, it was phenomenal. I'm, I'm slowly turning my Southern California wife into a Midwest deer eating, moose eating, elk eating, pheasant, duck, whatever else flies and dies eating. It's been a long transition, but we're working our way there. Greg, are you a moose lasagna guy? Uh, I would love to try it sometime, so just save me a bowl. Would you do that? Uh, I ate the last two pieces today, but I promise you, you'll get it made again. And, and we've already got a text question for you. Red, okay. from, Red from Alliance wants to know uh, the score of his biggest white tail. My biggest white tail? Yeah. Well, I, I did score it this year, but I shot a 5x5 five five this year, which is the biggest one I've ever shot. By Great. the way, you should see the picture the guys are using uh, on the stream, on the video stream. It's, is it it's the, it's the video, or It's the picture of you pointing at Michigan State up into the stands. Oh, it's a good one. That's a classic one. That's one. That's one of my my dad and I's favorite pictures. I can I can remember that exact moment when we after we hit the OT winner or walk off winner to Jamal Turner corner end zone touchdown and one of my favorite favorite games as a Husker. Well, I know you've been tracking some of these All Star games. How have some of the Huskers done in that, Jeremiah? Has anybody helped their stock in in, in what you're hearing? Absolutely. So we actually represent, my agency represents Austin Allen. Um, and so we were out at the NFL PA game with him and he had a phenomenal week. He had what all the scouts refer to as catch of the week. And when you're at one of those all-star games, the big thing you need to do is you need to pop on tape. And he absolutely did that. He's got himself a combine invite. So he's said the Indy, which is awesome, was at the Shrine Bowl. Um, I have a guy there from North Coast State who got a chance to watch Samore and Ben Stilly. And both those guys had phenomenal weeks. I mean, Samori had the great two touchdowns in the game. He had some really good catches during the week. I think I think all the Huskers made themselves some money. And then down at the Shrine Bowl, Cam Taylor Britt and JoJo Dolman did exactly what we expect them to do. Be solid defensive players. And I think JoJo really showed his range of coverage, which is a big question mark for a guy like him when he's kind of that tweener, safety, linebacker, what is he? And he really showed his ability to cover guys this week, which is really important for him. So I think all the Huskers made themselves some money in these all-star games. 
Let's go back to Austin Allen and his uh, catch of the week because you texted me that he just made the play of the day and then I had someone else that was there text me that Austin Allen made the play of the day literally almost at the same time. So it must have been a heck of a play. You had said leading up to that that you thought Austin Allen could play his way into a combine invite. But my question is when he made that grab, did we see Jeremiah sideline Jeremiah on a Nebraska football broadcast yeah. Jeremiah, or were you professional Jeremiah? Or did you go absolutely no, you, nuts? Sideline Jeremiah came <laughs> fully out. I jumped up and screamed, and I was super pumped. And I mean, it was one of those where the whole stand, even though it wasn't like a cheering time, everyone in the stands kind of went, whoa, because like, it was climb the ladder, go up, get it one-handed, and pull it down, where as soon as the quarterback threw it, you thought the ball was overthrown by 10 feet, and big old loss now, and just got up there and – pawed it out of the air and I definitely jumped up and gave a hell yeah and then realized settle back down you're working <laughs> so uh, it took me a second but yeah I, I turned into a little bit of a fan because I was just so excited for him busy with Jeremiah Searles here on Sports Nightly he's been uh, per, he's been all over the United States covering some of these all-star games and, and what's what's ahead for you now those games are kind of gone what is it a little bit of a lull before the combine now yeah, so a little bit of a lull. Um, I got four of my guys are training up in Minneapolis, so I'll head up to Minneapolis and work with them, some O-linemen up there. Uh, and then Indy on the 28th of this month, I'll head to Indy, and we'll be there for a week. Um, Austin and then another guy, Cordell Wilson, out of North Coast State, uh, will be there. And then I start doing the Pro Day circuit in March, which is – so Nebraska's Pro Day is on the 22nd of March. I then fly to Salt Lake on the 23rd, Fargo on the 24th, Brookings on the 25th, and Minneapolis on the 26th. So that's going to be a little bit of a gauntlet, but I'm super excited about it. You know what else starts on the 28th of February? Oh, yes, please. Inject it into my veins. A little Husker spring, spring football, football practice. Spring football. Finally, we need something to talk about on the football side again, and I am excited. Hey, I, I did want to ask one more about the pro uh, guys because I'm hearing that these guys are all um, handling their business in the interview part, which can be daunting when you're meeting and talking to all these scouts and GMs, and it's kind of a, a tedious process. But I, I know you're probably not surprised that not just Austin Allen, your guy, but all these Huskers are, are kind of handling themselves well throughout that side of it as well. Yeah, I think I think Coach Frost and the university does a really good job of preparing these guys for life beyond football, um, and that can be just in how they interview, right? It might not even be just half the time. It's not about those when these guys are getting interviewed. It's who are they as a person? Who where do they come from? How can they? How, how do they learn? How do they articulate what they learn from the classroom to the field, from the field to back in the classroom, and so much of this is just how you talk and communicate. And so I've heard a lot of good things from scouts about what the Huskers have been able to do on that front, too. So I think Coach Frost and Jamie Vaughn and those guys in compliance and Keith Zimmer, or Dennis LeBlanc all do phenomenal jobs of getting these guys ready to go for life after football, whether it's NFL or another career path. Besides Austin Allen, if the Bills could draft one Husker, which Husker would you want them to draft? Mm, that's a good one. You know, if they could draft one Husker, I think JoJo Doman would would fit really well up in Buffalo. I think he'd embrace the. I mean, he's a little bit crazy as it is. So I mean, I think if you input him into the Bills Mafia, he'll even embrace that place, and they'll embrace him even more. He'd make a great Bill. Good, good call. I think that's a good call. All right, uh, Scott Frost last week, Jeremiah press conference talked about a little bit of spring ball coming up here in a few weeks. Did mention some guys will not participate. I'm a little concerned. I want your thoughts because Turner Corcoran will not be a go and Teddy Prohaska is not quite back yet from his knee injury. That's a little concerning, isn't it? How, how, how far behind will those guys fall? The, the Teddy one's more concerning for me than Turner. Uh, well, I guess they're both equally concerning. Hey, Turner is a true positional change guy, right? I mean, I think with the emergence of what Teddy was last year, you can kind of pencil him in as day one starter at the tackle. So you've got to have that side. Where does Turner go? Right? I mean, if he makes that move to possibly center, then, yeah, it's huge that he's not going to be playing in the spring because these new quarterbacks we have are going to start building a, a rapport with their centers right away. And if you want to make a push to be a starting center, you need to get the, the comfortability with those quarterbacks. So him not practicing there is big. 
the big one for Teddy is just he's so young. The developmental reps in the spring are so important for young guys, just getting yourself back up to full speed. But if he's not back for the knee where he needs to be, it's it's definitely better to hold him out because he is so young. I think getting him back and having a full, healthy training camp versus kind of uh, 80% spring ball is definitely going to be better for his development. But you would like to see both those guys get two full spring balls under their belt, especially with as much time as Turner missed in fall camp last year. Obviously got a long ways to go and a lot to work out, battles, all of that. But if you had to name a starter today, he would project to be the starting center come uh, kickoff against Northwestern. Who would you guess that would be? You know, I've gone back and forth with this. I want to say Turner, but, you know, a big part of me thinks it might be uh, Nuri. You know, I think Nuri's a guy that's played a lot of football for us. He's played left guard. I think he's a guy that is smart enough to command the room at that center position. I think he's a guy that could step in there and, and really do a nice job and serviceable job maybe while we're trying to get Turner back up to speed or maybe Turner struggling there. I think Nuri could be a really good center for us as well. Very good. Well, uh, of the group, and, and they've now announced we have 11 portal transfers that are up and going, a, a recruiting class. What stood out at you as you saw those names kind of trickle in for Nebraska to add to the roster? You know, it, it reminded me of, of our last conversation in the booth after uh, one of the games, Greg, of like, you know, we're going to hit the transfer portal hard, and, and that's what we're going to build this one of these uh, teams. And we were right. <laughs> we were like, hey, they're going to hit this transfer portal, and they're, they're going to take the needs that they know that this team needs, and they know that they're going to go after it. And you saw some good DBs. You saw alignment. But the number one thing, and I think the number one thing on everyone in Husker land's mind is those two quarterback commits with the departure of Adrian getting Casey Thompson, getting Chubba Purdy, getting those two guys into into spring ball is going to be so exciting to watch and to see a true quarterback competition with, and I think people write him off, forget but Logan Smothers, man. He started a football game for us last year. He gave us a chance to win. He's not going to go quietly, I don't believe. So I'm excited to watch that quarterback battle, and then I'm also going to really excited to see how this DB room plays out. There's a lot of bodies in that DB room for four starting spots. We're not at all, uh, you know, disregarding Logan Smothers, but for those two new guys that are coming in that are trying to, you know, establish himself as leaders, because we heard Scott Frost talking about, you know, the quarterback has to be a leader of this football team. I've seen Casey Thompson down there, you know, throwing passes. I know both all of these guys are, are trying to kind of, you know, not, not rush it and, and come in too hot, but do what they have to do. What is that process like right now before you get into spring ball for these guys? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing about coming in and kind of inserting yourself as a leader is, one, you have to do the work without opening your mouth. You know, I think sometimes people come in and think, oh, i got to be a leader, i got to rah-rah, i got to talk, i got to break us down, right? Like, no, you become a leader by leading by example in the weight room, in winter conditioning, by in your drills of how you just – hold yourself and how you hold yourself to a high standard, which then makes other people follow and want to follow you. You don't want people to lead because I'm the quarterback. No, I want people to follow me because I'm a good leader. And I, that, that all happens during the, when no one's paying attention besides the strength coaches and the other teammates. And yeah, I promise you that those two guys have been coming in and wanting to handle business the right way. And because they have been, and if they're going to continue to do that, one of them, if not both of them, will emerge as big leaders for this football team. Well, Casey's the one that has a lot of film. What do you like about what you saw from him on film? Because I know you study guys all across the country. What do you like about Casey Thompson? I love he throws a pretty deep ball. Holy cow. I mean, when he, when he lets that thing go, that thing's on a rope, and he's extremely accurate with it. I like that when he scrambles. Sometimes I think scrambling quarterbacks sometimes get a tendency to scramble and not keep their eyes downfield. I think Casey Thompson does a good job of when he gets out of the pocket or when he escapes, he's not just looking for a run lane. He's looking for open receivers down the field before he wants to tuck it and run. And I think that's really important. I mean, you're seeing it more and more in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, those guys that can run to pass and not just pass to run. I think that those are the guys that are starting to make money, excuse me, in the NFL. And so I'm excited that hopefully we maybe got one of those guys coming to Lincoln. You know, I think there's there's some people that are concerned if you take too many guys out of the portal, it, it disrupts chemistry a little bit. Um, in some programs, I think Iowa's – I don't know that Iowa's taken anybody. They've, they've just gone their old – the recruiting route, do that. There's There's got to be a balance, right? It worked for Michigan State. I, I don't know that you can just ignore the portal, right? I mean, and, and do you feel comfortable with the numbers that Nebraska's brought in? 
Yeah, you can't ignore it. But I do think that there's something to be said of when you're a steady program, which Iowa is basically the definition of steady, right? Like eight and four, nine and three, ten and two, eight and four again. Like they don't have to feel like they need to mix things up. But when you're a program like Michigan State was two years ago or Nebraska has been where you haven't quite gotten over the hump to that winning season of consistency, yeah, you got to definitely address the portal because – you're losing as many guys as you need to bring into the portal. I mean, Iowa hasn't lost a ton of guys to the portal either, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And and so you got to kind of, as the enter, as the exit, you got to bring it in. So I think it was a good number of guys to bring in. Now you don't want to be bringing in 20 plus guys every single year, but I think I think 11 was the final number we brought in. And it, there is something about team chemistry, but there's also something about competition and the competitive spirit. And so I really hope that the competition comes in and pushes those young guys to be even better than they are now. Speaking of that, how about the running back room? <laughs> Crowded. <laughs> Crowded. <laughs> and I think that, I think we even, like, for me, I keep forgetting. I'm like, looking at them, like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have the guy that started last year as a true freshman in Gabe Irving coming back, right? right? I mean, you kind of forget about him because he just, he was gone so quickly in the season. But I'm excited to see who emerges in that room because last year, it's all we talked about in August, and then it just never really came to fruition of someone leading the pack. So that's going to be another huge storyline in the spring is, is there someone that separates themselves from the pack of a crowded room? And then is there two, is there three, is there four guys that separate themselves of a distinct difference of speed and vision and power? And are you going to be able to see that as much in the spring carry over into fall camp and then into the season too? So, so many good battles that are going to be going on during camp. I can't wait. Yeah the, com- fired up. yeah, the competition, the battles, that's that's exactly what we saw yesterday, the Pro Bowl, right? I mean, that, that's a, that we saw <laughs> lay it on the line, all those guys yesterday. That was the most unwatchable football I think I've ever seen in my life. I, I watched the first two series, and I was like, this is stupid. They should just play two-hand touch flag football and send everybody home. Did you flip it over to figure skating? I flipped over to golf. <laughs> I don't even know what it was. It was on the golf channel, so I'm like – Saudi Arabian Cup or something like that. I didn't know like anyone who was playing. I, was like, I would rather watch this than NFL Pro Bowl football. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, winter Olympic sport? Oh, long distance speed skating. Are you kidding me? The long yeah. track? That stuff is so fun. And then the short track speed skating too because someone's bound to wipe out and then blame the other person. Oh, it's super fun. Can you imagine how dead your legs would be after one of those races? Oh, my God. Dude, those dudes' quads are enormous. Yeah. Like, they've got these little baby bodies and then just monster quads. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, we'll travel safe. Glad we were able to catch up with you. We miss you. Uh, don't be a stranger, and we'll get you in here once spring ball gets going. Absolutely. Looking forward to a great catching up with you guys. Go Big Red. Thanks, buddy. There he is. Jeremiah Searles joining us here on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying, to save you time, shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, phone lines open for you and the text line, 402-413-2400. We're back to talk more sports next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds, one in 336,000. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models.
Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. To Wiltshire, right side to Bryce. Spins right off a screen from Walker. Shoots a long three. Got it. Bryce McGowan's. The Huskers Radio Network is your source for wall-to-wall Nebraska basketball coverage. And it continues on Wednesday as Bryce McGowan's and the Huskers host Minnesota at PBA. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 p.m. Central with tip-off at 7. Tune in to your local affiliate or by visiting Huskers.com or using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Huskers fans, it's time to plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Single game tickets are on sale now at huskers.com forward slash Ireland. Start the 2022 season in the best way. Plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Buy your single game ticket today at huskers.com forward slash Ireland. We make car buying easy at Woodhouse Chevy in Missouri Valley, Iowa, where we have a full lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. See what Chevy has to offer and explore the 2022 Traverse, Blazer, or Equinox. From solo missions to a party of five, our SUVs are dressed to impress with spacious seating and cargo areas so everybody can enjoy the ride. Find new roads in-store or online anytime at WoodhouseGM.com. When you're a sports fan, it's kind of like having a new love interest. You want to know all about them. Only, instead of learning about someone's third grade crush, you want to know the latest scores, stats, and lineups. To get that, you need Cox Internet. Cox gives you that window to look deeply into your beloved team's soul. Not to mention their injury list. Cox. We're sports 24-7. Learn more at cox.com sports. Everyone knows that Dakota Mac is known for their great rates on long-term fixed ag real estate loans. But just how long-term are they? Well, even longer term than your first ride on the Gravitron at the county fair. And even longer term than the line to buy the corn dog you definitely shouldn't have eaten before you got on the Gravitron. Oof, so long-term. Hi, it's Nick Renault with Dakota Mac. Call me at 308-380-7564 to learn about our competitive 30-year fixed rates on ag real estate loans. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Now it's time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker Women's Gymnastics at the top of the hour out at the Devaney Center will host Ohio State. Our next broadcast here on the network, men's basketball on Wednesday night as they host the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 8 o'clock tip, 7 o'clock for pregame coverage. The women will play Ohio State in Columbus. The Buckeyes trying to hang on against Rutgers late in their game in Columbus tonight. 6 o'clock tip for that game, 545 for pregame coverage. And Husker softball will debut this Friday. A couple of games up in the Uni Dome up in Cedar Falls, Iowa. They'll take on the Omaha Mavericks at 9 a.m. And then later that day, uh, they'll battle the Drake Bulldogs. That's what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. 402 413 2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off text. That was fun. Always fun to see, talk to Jeremiah. Isn't oh, it? yeah. He's, he's great. He's a good dude. He's a, I don't, I'm not sure about the moose. Moose, moose lasagna? Moose lasagna. It looked good, and his kids yeah. were, were just covered in yeah. it. They loved it. Yeah. That's quite a conversion he's trying to, <laughs> to do with, with that there. I should have asked him. Well, you should have asked him the Super Bowl pick. Darn it. Oh, yeah. I meant to throw out we'll who to he likes. Text him and see uh, yeah. 
what he thinks. We'll do that. Uh, it doesn't count for any of our official scoreboards, so we'll just uh, see. I mean, he'll just lose again to me, so it's fine. I just had somebody text me today and, and a few minutes ago and says, Lovey Smith back in the NFL. I'm like, yeah, Lovey Smith, who Illinois fired a year ago, back as a head coach in the NFL with the Houston Texans. Good for Lovey. I like Lovey. I do too. And good to get diversity as we've had some um, conversations about that recently and uh, getting some more, more of that going on in head coaching positions is always good. Lovey uh, did, it could not really get much momentum going at Illinois. He didn't. You know, he was kind of got him into a bowl game one time at his time uh, as the, the head coach in Champaign, but now back as the head coach in the NFL with the Houston Texans, who is an organization certainly dealing with a lot with the Deshaun Watson fiasco there. I mean, that really upended that whole organization with what Deshaun did to them. That He was their quarterback of the future. That's the guy that they built their team around, and then all that happened, they had to cut him loose. And he was playing so well. I mean, I had him as a fantasy quarterback once, one season, and he lit it up. So, you know, they kind of built around him, and, yeah, now you got to start over, I guess. Um, I have some friends that are fans of Baker Mayfield that maybe hope that Baker might What's going on with Kyler Murray? He's having a little spout or, or spat right now with the Cardinals. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to prove a point to Arizona and, and get a big deal or what. He is hoping he's been working. His agent has been working on an extension to his contract down there, but he's unfollowed the Cardinals on his social media pages. So I am yeah, maybe it's posturing right now. Uh, going I, down I told the boys if he goes to the Steelers, I will hop on that bandwagon with them. They don't want him, I don't think. Uh, well, they, there's a split back there. <laughs> one yes, one no on, on Connor Murray. Uh, they don't up. want me. Oh, they don't want me I as a fan. They, want. Okay. they want Kyler. They don't want me. I got you. <laughs> uh, buckle up. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Went along with Jeremiah. We need to work a break in, but still time if you want to be a part of this hour. 402-413-2400. Back to wrap up hour one next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. Attention anyone standing near a mud puddle. Trucks and bucks is back, so take cover. The Nebraska Lottery's most popular scratch game is roaring down the road again. And this year we're giving away eight blue 2022 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Flex Fuel trucks. So buy a $2 Trucks and Bucks ticket today. You could win a new Ford F-150 and make a real splash in your neighborhood. Ford F-150 is a registered trademark owned and licensed by Ford Motor Company. Top prize odds one in 336000 Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Wherever your path leads, the Mazda CX-30 is made to help you follow it. 
With an invigorating design and elegant cabin, the Mazda CX-30 will give you a drive worth experiencing. Powered by a turbocharged engine, the dynamic performance and premium stitching makes every moment worth savoring. Shop our Mazda CX-30 lineup at one of our two convenient locations at Woodhouse Mazda in Bellevue or at Woodhouse Place just off 144th and Giles Road. Online at WoodhouseMazda.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres. Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. A few more minutes left this hour. Fred Hoiberg, next hour, our men's basketball show. Still time for you to jump on board with a call or a text, 402-413-2400, the number to uh, be a part of of this show. Olympic action tonight and mentioned 10 o'clock that big hockey match between Team USA and Team Canada on the women's side that was the gold medal match four years ago that should be some high drama later tonight Ohio State in uh, women's play in the Big Ten held off Rutgers winning 61-57 that to Nebraska will play on Thursday night in Columbus another good chance for Amy Williams in the, in the group uh, Jessica to go get a nice road win. Yeah, no doubt, and bounce back, and that would be a huge opportunity there and always big to get uh, road wins, so still a few on the road and protect the home court. So, yeah, get back in the win column and um, get a bounce-back victory will be big for this team. How about all the freshman awards again going to Nebraska, both Bryce and Noah? I mean, Ella. it's going to happen. I mean, at, at this point, you might as well just give at least Alexis Murkowski the She's Big Ten it. Freshman and, of the Year and Bryce award. Bryce does, too. I, I, do, I do, too. I think so. I mean, the only thing is that – the team isn't performing. Sometimes that hinders those votes a little bit. Um, who gets the freshman of the year and the player of the year awards? But, you know, I think Nebraska women's is playing well enough that I think, I mean, I think it's a lock concerned for Alexis at, Markowski. Concerned at all about Jazz Shelley shooting right now? No, I'm not. I think she'll, she'll get it figured out. And, you know, she just does so many other things so well. I mean, she's just an. Great rebounder, an unbelievable, I mean, unbelievable passer. I love watching her pass the basketball. The way she finds her teammates. I mean, the other day she had, you know, almost a double-double, seven rebounds, nine assists at halftime. And I think she's fine with that. Like, that's that's what is important to know about Jazz is she's not one that gets caught up and, you know, knocking down a bunch of threes or scoring 20 points. I mean, she wants to do whatever her team needs her to win, but, I mean, she loves to pass the basketball and distribute the basketball, and so I don't think she gets caught up in all of that. But I, I, those shots will fall. I mean, she's got a good shot. We've seen it go down. I think she just, you know, is in a little bit of a funk. And, you know, good thing for the Huskers, they still got Ashley Scoggin over there uh, that's knocking it down at a high rate. When you have Jazz and Sam Hybe go combine one of 16, you're not going to win. I mean, I mean, remarkable, they only lost by 15. Pretty much everybody but Scoggin shot – Poorly. I mean, in the first half, they shot like 21%. I mean, they just, they were missing free throw line jumpers. I mean, they just couldn't get anything to go. But yeah, I mean, with if those two are both off on the same night, it's going to be a tough night for the Huskers probably. Another pretty good night for Allison Widener. She uh, ended up with eight points. Did turn the ball over four times, which I'm sure that's probably the first category that Amy Williams looked at. Turnovers. Where yeah, did that come Yeah, and they didn't uh, have as many assists. And a lot of that is because the ball didn't Miss, go in. They didn't in. make shots. They didn't make shots. Yeah. But this is a team that's, you know, averaging and, and up there with some of the teams, the best in the country at passing the basketball. And they, you know, didn't – they had more turnovers, I think, than assists. Did it end up that way? It, it was for a long time. So, um, you know, that's an area that this – you know, again, when the shots fall, they'll be better, uh, better at that. But I just, I think overall, it's just maybe a little bit gassed and, and tough. But you got through that one, and hopefully, get back on the right side of it coming up on Thursday. Thursday against the Buckeyes, who just again capped off a victory of a Rutgers, 61 to 57. Our sports highly hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. Dennis, on our text line, did former head coach for the Nebraska baseball, John Sanders, pass away? He did. Uh, Dennis, in fact, Darren Erstad is going to join us tomorrow night, reminisce about Coach Sanders, a uh, longtime baseball coach here in Nebraska. Uh, sad to hear that over the weekend. Head basketball coach Fred Hoiberg will join us next hour. Our men's show, we haven't had one in a few weeks. Looking forward to chatting with the coach. That's next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Start your car buying journey today at Woodhouse Ford and experience the difference. Our team is ready to help you get the job done with our full lineup of all new 2022 trucks. The 2022 F-150, Ranger, and Maverick are built tough and ready to tackle whatever lies ahead. Shop online anytime at woodhouseford.com or visit us in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmouth. Woodhouse Ford has something for everyone. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and Bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and Bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska's new collaborative biosecurity lab is leading research to safeguard America's food supply against growing threats in partnership with the U.S. Departments of Defense and Homeland Security. The lab brings together world-leading expertise in agriculture and a deep understanding of the complexities of strategic deterrence across the threat spectrum and in multiple domains. Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go is mealtime made easy. Just order delicious meals online for convenient curbside pickup or have it delivered. Want breakfast? Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go. Need lunch? Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go. Doing dinner? Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go. Get pancakes, burgers, fried chicken, lasagna, high chai Asian dishes, sushi, pizza, and more. If you're craving it, Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go has it with curbside pickup or delivery. Order today at hy slash mealtime.
This is the Nebraska cool, boy. This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here comes Baker down the floor to Hyatt. Hyatt tries to jam it. Shot is blocked by Trey McGowan's. Run down by Webster. What a defensive play. Here comes Trey. Webster, Trey McGowan's to Bryce McGowan's. The drive. Punch it up and in. Holy cow. The offensive play of the year for Nebraska. What a transition from defense to offense as the Huskers take a seven-point lead. Bryce up top against Johnny Davis, comes right, drives the ball down the lane line, the runner, got it! Seven-point game, two threes and a two by Bryce. It's 57 to 50. Holy cow, what a finish. Down that right lane line, shot it high off the glass over Crowell. Webster drives the ball, picks it up, up top Tominaga with a pump fake, steps back, drives the ball to the rim, scoop shot up and good with a left hand by Casey Tominaga. Huskers have come from 10 down to take a two-point lead. How did Casey make that over Musa Diabate? What a basket Here. by Casey. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you and welcome to the program. The head coach with us for the hour. Here's the number if you want to be a part of this one, 402-413-2400. You can also text if that's a better way for you to communicate. We're also up on our YouTube stream, and if you want to jump in the chat room there, we can relay some thoughts over to the coach as that as well. Nebraska coming off a disappointing Saturday at PBA, and I know that was – you could just see it on everybody's face, your face, the player's face. I don't, I don't think they expected that to happen at all Saturday. It's about as hard a one as I've been through, Greg. It just after the way we've been playing, I thought we'd really been competing, came off a really good uh, performance at Michigan where we had a great chance to win. Obviously, had a very difficult call uh, there down the stretch with Casey and, you know, didn't react the right way. Uh, you know, with, that's Casey's, Casey's passion. He's such a uh, hard playing, um, you know, just loves the game and, you know, unfortunately, uh, went in and made a great play on the ball on Dickinson and then, uh, you know, got the tee and gave them basically a, a, at least a four-point swing, um, you know, maybe more because we got the ball after that block. But, you know, those things happen. You got to find a way to get past it. We had a really competitive game against Rutgers the game before. Uh, and then two previous to that, single-digit games with Indiana and with um, uh, with Wisconsin. And then, yeah, it just it's, it's, it was so unfortunate to come home on alumni weekend with a great crowd uh, to go out and play with that kind of effort. And, you know, as poor as we were playing, we still had a lead uh, at the 13 minute mark. It was 14 to 13. And mm -hmm. then the wheels just completely came off. We got hit with adversity. We didn't handle it. Uh, and we never recovered. And, and that, that's, that's really disappointing when you do that in your, in your own building, especially. Northwestern attempted 31 threes. Is that normal for them, or did they look for their outside shot yeah. more in that game? They were a very talented team, and, and we knew that coming in. They'd had a ton of close games, and uh, they've got length, they've got skill. Uh, it poses a different challenge. They've got a five man that can pick and pop. Pete Nance is a 44% three point shooter. Uh, <clears throat> com uh, good combination with Ryan Young coming off the bench, a really strong. Uh, back to the basket player who hurt us in there as well. Uh, but Boo Booey was, was the difference. He was coming off those screens. Uh, we were not jamming into the hip to get over those screens hard enough. We went to a blitz. We were trying to get the ball out of his hands. Uh, we did not rotate well when they sprayed the ball around. And then we went to a switch. And first possession, second half, we we're in a switch coverage. We didn't switch to the level. And he comes out and he hits the three on the first possession. So it was just one of those games, uh, you know, again, the disappointment of where we were. Uh, where we are right now as a program to not go out and fight all the way for 40 minutes. And when you do that in this league, uh, those type of things are going to happen to you. I thought one guy brought it for you, and that was CJ. I thought he played one of his better games. I agree with you. I, I, CJ uh, hit three threes pretty much right when he got in the game. It yeah. kept us in it. And, you know, I thought Alonzo did a good job getting into the paint and spraying all three of those out to CJ. And, uh, you know, again, you, you just you looked at our pace, Greg. I mean, both ways, you know, coming down the floor and, you know, we watched all those possessions in film today and going back the other way in transition, we were just stuck in mud and, you know, unacceptable effort and, you know, got after it today. We'll get after it again tomorrow and, and hopefully bring it on Wednesday. All right, again, if you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. Let's go out to Kozad and Eric. Good evening, Eric. You're up with the coach. How are you doing, Fred? I'm doing okay, Eric. How are you? Oh, all right. 
right, like you said, this is Eric and Kozad. Last time I called in, Tim Miles was the head coach, and unfortunately I had to uh, let him go live on air. I'm 51 years old. I've been watching, listening, or attending Nebraska basketball, haven't missed a game in 40 years. Um, I'm done, sir. I, I just, it's not there anymore. You're uh, 20 and 62. So at what point do you realize that this isn't working? It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. I'm hurting. I'm sure you're hurting. The fans are hurting. And in saying that, man to man, and but coach to a fan, can you tell me how you can justify still being here? And in saying that, unfortunately, I'm going to have to let you also go and end your employment. Well, you know, first of all, Eric, you're right. Nobody's more disappointed than I am with how things are going and everybody in this program uh, right now with the way that this season has gone. Uh, you know, as far as, you know, where we are right now, obviously, you know, going into the season, we did have high expectations for this team after taking over uh, what we did and, you know, basically putting a team together in a very short amount of time in year one, uh, year two, a team that I thought was really making progress, uh, got hit by COVID probably harder than any team in the country uh, where we had to shut down and had several key players coming back in that stretch that were really the first ones to get the virus. Uh, to shut down the way we did. I thought our guys competed extremely hard when, once we got back and played those grueling 14 games in 29 days. Uh, you know, going into the season, obviously, with a couple things that happened early and, you know, just, just reality and trying to stick up for our guys here with Trey, you know, going down in the third game with a broken foot, with Wilhelm, who you knew you were getting out of every time you stepped on the floor, going down with a season ending knee injury, two of your toughest guys uh, that, are not able to play for us or were out for a long stretch. Uh, and again, I thought we had gotten to the point where we were really making progress and we were competing. We just could not get over the hump. And Eric, that happens when you struggle down the stretch of close games and you don't have the confidence uh, to win those. And it's, it, it, it wears on you. And there's no doubt about it. Last game was completely unacceptable. And we're going to do everything we can to fix it. We've got eight games, eight opportunities left to, to get on the floor and try to create some type of momentum heading into next year where we've got a very good recruiting class, you know, one of the top recruiting classes that, that has ever been signed at Nebraska, the number one junior college big player in the country, big 6'10", bruiser, tough, tough kid. We've got a kid that came at semester, uh, Denham Dawson, an incredibly tough, old-school throwback type player. Uh, we've got a shooting guard from New Jersey, a great school, a great program, uh, who has an opportunity to come in and, and step in and play right away. And then uh, Ramel Lloyd, really a jack of all trades, plays for Sierra Canyon in uh, Los Angeles with LeBron James' son on that team and several other very high-profile players. Uh, he's been MVP of three of their tournaments that they've played in. So, you know, again, we're going to do everything we can to get right. I understand the frustration of everybody. And, and again, I can promise you nobody's more frustrated uh, than I am as far as going out there and trying to get our guys to play the right way and, and find a way uh, to compete and get over the hump and win games. And that's our job for these next eight games to do everything we can to give ourselves an opportunity to win and give us something to feel good about heading into the off season. So, you know, I appreciate your call, appreciate the passion. Um, but I can promise you there's, there's no more, nobody in this world more frustrated right now with where things are than I am. And I'm going to do everything I can to get it turned around. When, what was the players' mood like today? They came in and competed. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, you know, watching that film was very telling. And, you know, that film doesn't lie. And, you know, our guys came in and, uh, you know, got after it, competed, good healthy competition uh, today. Uh, and we're going to need another one of those days tomorrow, Greg. And, you know, it, it did. It, you, you could tell it hurt. Uh, what happened, and you know everybody wants to make sure we, we do not let that happen again. Let's head down to uh, Houston and Blake. Good evening, Blake. You're up with the head coach. Hey, Fred. Good to see you. I don't know if you remember me. I uh, I talked to you down at the Oklahoma game when I bumped into you. Uh, wished you good luck and all that. So I don't know if you remember that, but good to uh, good to talk to you. Um, you know, uh, 
there were just a couple things I wanted I wanted to, to ask you. Um, I, I question a personnel decision or two. Most specifically, I look at the Rutgers game and how we had Casey in on defense um, in the one possession game there late, um, knowing that he's, you know, needless to say, a little bit of a defensive liability. He's a scoring specialist. So I didn't really understand, I guess, what was going on there. But in the greater scheme of things, um, we're 311th in the country in three-point percentage. We're 354th in the country and 356th in the country, respectively, in, off, in opponents' offensive and defensive rebounding per game. Um, you know, with, with next year, you know, this year, obviously, the, the postseason is not going to happen. Um, but with next year, we're losing the, our core of players again, and it's going to be another rebuild, just like every season under you has. Um, we want it to work. You know, the fans, you know, it's not just basketball that's been tough lately. It's really been all major men's sports. So, you know, it, we're impatient. We're an impatient group. And, you know, growing up rooting for us, I'm sure you kind of understand that. Um, but I just want to know, when we're losing our core and, and the offensive philosophy just really has not been working in the Big Ten with how bad um, our three-point percentage has been, you know, how are you going to adjust next year, hoping, you know, obviously that we'll be here, how are you going to adjust next year and, and change the plan to make it work in the Big Ten? Because everything we've seen thus far is just flat out not working, and I think you'd agree to that. Yeah, and, and you know, first of all, I think you're probably talking about the Michigan game there, Blake, with, with the Casey. group that I had yeah. in there at the end of the game. And, you know, listen, that group was competing. They were giving us a chance. Casey was a huge part of that. Uh, so we, we left that group out there. And, you know, looking back on it, sure, you always look at things. But, you know, that group, I thought, did such a great job of climbing out of that hole. We had a terrible start to the second half after an unbelievable first half, uh, turned a 10-point deficit into a 7-point lead, so a 17-point turnaround. And that was the group that I thought gave us the best opportunity to win that game. And, you know, unfortunately, they made a couple plays there at the end. Uh, didn't work out. You know, as far as the system, you know, the thing that I thought we would be able to do this year at a high level was shoot the basketball. That was the least of my concerns with this team and with this group. And uh, obviously early on, uh, the way we were struggling. So I changed the system. I changed the system mid-year, which doesn't happen very often. And uh, our numbers in improved after we got you know, some of the nuances down uh, from what we were doing. Now, Rutgers game, we did not shoot a good percentage. I thought it was our best defensive effort and rebounding effort of the year. Uh, and then this last game, obviously, against Northwestern uh, was not a good offensive performance. But our numbers had been climbing. Uh, since we changed up the system. You know, as far as looking forward, as far as what we're going to do with next year's team, you know, it's all about who comes back. Uh, you know, there's several guys that are going to have decisions to make on that. And it's about trying to do everything you can to put your guys in a position to be successful. You know, I've run so many different um, offenses and systems over the course of my coaching career based on the talents of our players. Uh, you know, going back to my first coaching opportunity at Iowa State, a very classic first year. We had a guy, Deontay Garrett, who ended up being a pro uh, at the point guard position, ran a lot of classic type sets. And then my second year with Royce White, a transfer from Minnesota, 6'8", about 270 pound freight train. I put the ball in his hands and really kind of started the five out spread offense movement uh, that you see all over the world right now. So, you know, with that, uh, had a couple other rosters and ran different types of sets with a guy like George Niang uh, that I had. You know, when I was in the NBA, I ran different, uh, different sets and different uh, offenses based on the personnel. So, you know, for us moving forward, again, I thought we had the right system in the way we shot the ball in the preseason and your two barometers early in the season are your exhibition games, which were Colorado and, and Peru State, which we shot the heck out of the ball. I think made 12 and 13 threes in those two games. And then we just really hit a slide early in the season, could not throw that thing in the ocean. And, you know, once we got about 10 games in, I'd seen enough, and I, and I decided to change the system and, you know, try to get the ball more inside uh, to Derek, let him get more touches, uh, let him facilitate more of what we're doing through the offense, whether it's on the block or at the elbows. And, you know, Derek is a guy, obviously, that's been probably our most efficient, uh, most consistent uh, player from start to finish. So, you know, as far as changing things moving forward, you know, we'll look at everything uh, as far as what we have coming back and, you know, what our roster looks like. And then we'll put the system together, uh, work on it over the course of the summer, and obviously try to be much better uh, early in the season, get off to a good start to generate confidence. This game is so much easier to play when you're a confident basketball player. And I know that from experience. Playing this game for as long as I did, when I had confidence, 
you know, this game was not easy, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and you know, it, it was uh, it was a joy to be on the floor when the, when you had that confidence. When you didn't, it's a grind. And as a player, you got to do everything you can to keep your spirits up, keep working, which our guys do. They come in for extra work. Uh, got a bunch of individual shooting, shooting sessions in the office after practice today before I came over here. And, you know, it's about trying to hopefully get off to a great start to generate confidence, uh, you know, to be a better offensive team. And then, you know, rebounding, I knew that would be an issue with our group coming in. Losing Wilhelm was, hurt us. Losing Trey uh, hurt us. Uh, but we got to be better. I mean, if you want to win in this league, you got to be able to rebound the ball. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the Indio T Highway Safety Office. You mentioned Derek. He's having to battle those Coburns and Dickinsons night in and night out. Are you concerned about him wearing down as this season gets further down the road here? You know, I, I'm not, no. Greg. I, I mean, you know, you're playing a couple games a week, and, you know, you should be able to go out there. I think Eduardo has given us uh, Michigan. I thought he gave us great yeah. minutes uh, out there. And,. Uh, you know, Derek, he is. He's given up size every time he steps on the floor. And, you know, a lot of times on rebounds, you know, Derek's locked up in a battle. Our guards need to come in and do a much better job of going over the top, uh, you know, and getting, getting those long ones. As many three-pointers in the analytics era that we live in that are being shot, you gotta, you got to get those long, uh, you know, rebound the elbows and get the long ones. But Derek, you know, he goes out there and fights every time he's on the floor. You know what you're getting from Derek. Fifteen turnovers Saturday, that's a little higher, I'm sure, than what you would want in a game. Yeah, and, and they converted off them, yeah. and, and, yeah. that, and that's the problem when a team, I think we had 11 turnovers early, and I want to say they had, uh, I think, 30 points off of those turnovers. So, you know, it's about the quality of turnover, and when you throw the pick six and they go out and convert either at the layup or a three, um, you know, it, it's just it's a really tough thing to fight back from. And points off turnovers and offensive rebounds, you know, have been two areas that have really hurt us in league. Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop. Woodhouse first, 18 brand, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. We've got more with the coach coming up next. Huskers fans, it's time to plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Single game tickets are on sale now at huskers.com forward slash Ireland start the 2022 season in the best way. Plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Buy your single game ticket today at huskers.com forward slash Ireland. Hey folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine, your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. You could win a 2022 Porsche Macan from Porsche Omaha this season. Four lucky Husker fans will have a chance to win a 2022 Porsche Macan if they make a putt on the court at halftime at one of four home men's basketball games this season. Each contestant will receive a pair of tickets, hospitality, and a visit with the broadcast team before one of the home games with Ohio State, Rutgers, Northwestern, or Iowa. For more information and the official rules, go to huskers.com slash putt. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. 
From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Here is a before winter to do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to do list call JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. See beyond traditional security with Kidwell. Kidwell's experts collaborate with its data cabling and IT teams to design and install surveillance camera systems that integrate with your network, are easy to manage, and can be accessed from anywhere. The Kidwell team assures every piece of technology performs seamlessly and creates greater confidence and a higher level of protection for your business and staff. From video surveillance to information technology to data cabling, see beyond to what's possible at KidwellInc.com. Hey Husker fans, this is Anne-Marie from the Nebraska Beef Council. Just like the big red wins on the court, you can win at the dinner table with great tasting beef. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, there are countless ways to create a meal that will have your family cheering for more. Visit BeefIt'sWhat'sForDinner.com for easy beef recipes, cooking tips, and meal inspirations. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Brought to you by Nebraska's beef producers and their beef checkoff. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Did your dad ever have a John Deere tractor growing up? Your dad's an agriculture guy, right? He is an agriculture guy. He, uh, yep, he was a rural sociologist. Yeah. But never had a John Deere. Didn't have a John Deere? Nope. All right, well, we'll, we'll mention what he... push mower, which I was kind of... <laughs> responsible for going that was my job i used to mow a lot when i was growing up that was one of my summer jobs therapeutic yeah it is get out there and think about things 402-413-2400 the number to dot us up with a comment or question let's go to minnesota and tim good evening tim you're up with the head coach hey coach um i didn't catch the first few minutes of the northwestern or actually of tonight uh but i did listen to the northwestern game didn't get a didn't get to see on television, only listen. And the thing that was just really frustrating and um, disheartening was it just sounds like there was uh, just a lack of effort. Now, but I want to be fair, I, that's only, you know, just kind of based on my on what I heard. But um, I appreciated when what I did catch you saying tonight, though, was that it was unacceptable and it seemed very much so after. Now, um, so I wanted to ask about that. I know a few earlier in the season I had asked about conditioning. Not necessarily going to go on that. The reason I had asked that is I thought that with the, in relating to shooting that uh, you know maybe there was a problem you know with just having tired legs. But I'm not. I don't know that conditioning was a part of the lackluster sh showing. So um, so I'm just so wasn't sure to, if it was just a lack of effort or but. Um, I also want to ask about Casey Tominaga. I really enjoyed watching him against Michigan. And there was a play, there was that one play, and unfortunately it turned out to be kind of pivotal where he was called for that foul, and, and he had a reaction that brought him a technical foul. But now I'm, I wasn't sure if that um, was just that he was mad that he was fouled or if he was mad that they called it that way. Obviously he probably has to contain himself a little bit. So if I was kind of curious about about that. There's, I guess one other question, but I might save that for another week. So we'll we'll stick to those two questions. Yeah, th thanks. Thanks for the call, Tim. I, yeah, starting with Casey and the play that you're talking about against Michigan, and it, it was it was frustration. Obviously, the call that you know Casey made a really good play on Dickinson in the post, went down there, got a piece of it, and unfortunately got whistled for the foul and then you know the reaction 
was actually very similar to a reaction one of their players had in the first half. You know, unfortunately, we did not get the call on that one. But, you know, Casey, we talked about it, uh, you know, his passion, his energy, the impact he had on that game to help us get out of that hole and, and to build that lead that we did. Uh, you know, he just was playing with so much swagger and confidence out there. And unfortunately, you know, that play was, as you said, very pivotal in the re end result of that game, being a game that was still tied, uh, you know, after that swing uh, with about 50 seconds to play. So, you know, love Casey's, as I talked about earlier, Casey's passion for this game and his energy uh, and everything he's all about. You know, he battles, um, you know, bigger, stronger guys, but, you know, he's going to go out and give everything he has on every possession. That's what I love about him. Uh, you know, as far as Northwestern game, as, as we talked about earlier in the show, um, there's no doubt about it, Tim. It was as disappointing a game as I've been a part of on the sidelines uh, from the effort and, uh, you know, as far as what we had coming home after really competing uh, and being in and having a chance to win four consecutive games and then to come out with that type of effort, as you said, it's unacceptable. And, you know, just got to go out and correct it and do everything we can uh, to get right and go out and give ourselves a chance to win on Wednesday night. He was also tired. Are you okay with where you are conditioning wise? Has that been an issue at yeah, all? Yeah, conditioning. You talked about legs and shooting with conditioning. And you, you look at our shooting numbers, they've, they've really gone up uh, since that horrible start shooting the basketball. We had, a, I think, an eight, eight game stretch where we were shooting about 40% from the three point line. And those numbers had really been climbing. A big part of that was CJ, and a big part of that was Casey. As far as their percentages, Lat had a couple games in a row where he hit multiple threes, and Bryce shot the ball over almost 41 percent uh, over that stretch as well. So you know, guys are uh, shooting the ball better for the most part. Um, you know, some of that has to do with their understanding exactly what the new system is all about. They're picking their sh uh, uh, their opportunities. I think or shot selection has gotten better for the most part. And I think that's what is leading to the increase in our shooting numbers. But, uh, you know, as far as conditioning, um, you know, really to me it's confidence, Tim, as far as shooting. And, uh, you know, I think our guys are stepping up and shooting the ball with more confidence and more conviction. And you, you look at a guy like Bryce, I mean, he obviously really struggled early as far as shooting the ball and percentages, especially once we started playing in conference. Uh, you look at how he has handled – uh, the more phys physical players as we've gone forward and that stretch that he has had. I think he had four or five games in a row scoring over 20 points, getting himself to the free throw line. Uh, he has made such huge strides, and, and a big part of that is playing through contact. And he's really bought into, you know, even lifting weights on game days, which, uh, you know, you don't see many 18-year-old kids uh, buy into that at that at this stage of their career for you know for me I think I'd started doing that when I was 30 just to wake my old muscles and, and get my legs going uh, you know when I was an older player but this is really going to benefit Bryce and it's going to benefit his future and you see what he's doing he's, he's really opening up a lot of eyes right now. Dorothy Lynch home style and light and lean dressing endless flavor abilities a text question for you coach is there a Common denominator that is preventing local high school guys from becoming Huskers. Well, you know, I, I know there was something, uh, I think, last week that was written about that. And, you know, some of the, these players that have gone to other schools, you know, they, we have had all of them on uh, official visits. And, you know, I think the biggest thing we have to do is start winning. And, you know, hopefully you can attract some of those players. But, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, tell a kid, you know, with where some of these guys are choosing for their schools. You got Blue Bloods, you got some of the top programs in the countries, you got teams recently that have won championships. So, you know, you just got to do everything you can to build relationships, which, which I feel that we have uh, built relationships with, with some key players in the state. Uh, you know, and again, hopefully, uh, you know, the upcoming classes, uh, you can do enough to, uh, you know, to want them to play at home. Playing at home is a great thing. I, I was very fortunate to do that in my career. Uh, growing up in Ames, my dad being a professor at Iowa State, and it, it was a great thrill to play in front of people that really had been supporting, you know, for, me, for my situation my entire life and, you know, helped us get to AAU tournaments. This is back when you played one AAU tournament. You played the national one. And, you know, to be able to play in front of friends and family uh, was a great thrill. So, you know, biggest thing for us, we've got to get this thing going and then hopefully attract some of the, those top players. Let's talk Minnesota. That's your opponent coming up on Wednesday. First year head coach there. I think they've surprised people early in the season. They've, not, they've had some struggles, as a lot of teams would in this league right now. What's your take on the Gophs? Well, two of the, two of the better players in our league. Um, 
and uh, with Willis and and uh, in battle, you know, two guys that are in the top ten in three point shooting, uh, both can go off. They've had some really good wins. One at Michigan, uh, you know, won a, a really good game when they only had seven available bodies uh, against Rutgers at home, and they've been in every game. They, they're tied uh, with about a minute to go against Wisconsin, and uh, had a lead against Iowa in the second half the other night. So they're playing really good basketball. I think all their losses are to teams in the top 30 in the net. So, you know, it's a team that poses, again, a lot of challenges because their guards can really get it going. They, they, they'll ISO uh, a lot. They'll try to look at matchups and, and who's out there on the floor uh, that they can go at. And, you know, again, it's just a really skilled uh, roster. They're not very deep, uh, which, you know, f sometimes, uh, you know, for the coach and the players, they know exactly when they're getting in there, where their minutes come. I coached a team my first year where when, when I took a lot of transfers, I basically had six guys that were eligible to play, and they all knew they were going to play a lot. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a team that, that does play uh, with good confidence. They'll switch up their defenses and uh, try to keep you off balance. So, you know, again, the biggest thing, you bring the effort, you go out there, and as I have talked to our team multiple times, uh, you, you know, if, if you don't bring the effort, it doesn't matter what your scheme is. You're not going to have any chance, any opportunity. If you go out there and you bring it, you know, then you can execute the game plan and have a chance to win. And that's what we had been doing until the Northwestern game. So it's about getting back, doing the basics better, uh, you know, making sure we're talking, uh, getting back in transition, playing with pace on both ends and hopefully giving ourselves a chance against a good team. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility line's marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Interesting, we're here February 7th today. You haven't played Minnesota. Next Sunday you play Iowa. So you're playing a couple teams you haven't seen all year long, and you're deep into this year. Yeah, we haven't played Penn State, and we, we haven't right. played Maryland. And, you know, we've, we've got a lot of those uh, games coming up. So, you know, listen, January was an absolute grind of a schedule. In fact, we didn't play one team in January that had a losing record in league. That. And, um, you know, it, it's t every night in this league you're playing against t talented, tough physical players and you, you got to bring your a game and you know for us we have a very thin margin we got to go out there and and um, uh, you know again we've gotten ourselves to the point in multiple games you know you look back North Carolina State Ohio State Rutgers Michigan Illinois I mean there's a lot of games Indiana uh, where we were right there and you know the teams that have the confidence down the stretch are the teams that win those games and you know we got to find a way again to get so hopefully some momentum late in this year Feeling, get something to feel good about going into the off season. Kind of a question like that from Doug in Panama on our text line. He says, "How do you, how do you approach it when you're playing a team that's not ranked or doesn't have a glossy record? When your guys maybe aren't locked in as much or not quite as focused? Well, you, you can't have it. I mean, in this league, if you, as we saw on Saturday, yeah. if, if you don't bring it, and you don't have the focus. You're not going to have any chance, and, you, and you're going to get embarrassed. And that's that's what happened to us." on Saturday. So, uh, you know, I'm confident that that will not happen again as, as we go on the rest of the year. All right. Uh, next segment, we're going to talk to your video coordinator, Matt Holt. Been here for five years. Tell me about this young man. Yeah, Matt is, he's phenomenal. And, you know, those guys, those film guys, they put in as many hours as anybody, you know, as far as preparing all the different scouting reports that you have to put in and, you know, the personnel edits and then the, 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 the offense defensive edits. Uh, that you end up showing your team. So he works hand in hand with the assistant who has uh, that particular game scout and uh, very knowledgeable, does, has done a great job, has worked for multiple coaches, uh, you know, including at Northeastern and, you know, worked here for Coach Miles. And, you know, Tim, when I got the job here, just talked to me about how, uh, how I needed to keep him on board. And he was right. He blew me away when I first met him and talked to him. And, and uh, you know, certainly is not disappointed. He's, he does a great job. Uh, comes in every day. He's one of the first in the office. Certainly one of the last to leave. And you know that's that's what those film guys do. And and he's Matt Holt has got a really bright future in front of him. How much has that changed in college basketball from your playing days to now? What's available to you to a player for those kind of resources? Yeah, you you have everything right there. And you know so much goes into it. And you watch all you watch every possession. You know the the one thing you try and do is not overload your guys where you show them so much that they don't remember anything. You try to put what they're going to do, uh, their tendencies, and you try to put a game plan to try and slow them down as best you can. Uh, but there is. There's so many resources now. I mean, you got every possession right there at your fingertips. They've got technologies now that show every play and the tendencies of the players as far as what percentage of the time they go right versus left. 
uh, you know, you get their heat maps and in, in the zones and where they shoot, which never seems to work for us when we try to get a <laughs> guy bait him into shooting a shot where he's yeah. shooting 15 percent. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's so much technology out there. There's so many services out there, and you just try to pick the best ones to give you the best chance. I was going to say, how do you balance that that you don't overload guys? Yeah, I mean, again, you just have to uh, go into the game and figure what they've run. Uh, you know, as far as their package, the, the most run plays, and especially you look at the last five, and you know what plays uh, that they have run the most, what they're going to run down the stretch. Uh, you know, all those different things, what covers, what types of coverages have bothered them, and then try to pick the package of what you think uh, can be successful on the other end. Ever use it, and maybe you use it as a player, where if you were going through a tough stretch shooting the ball, go back and look at you when you were making shots and see if you were doing something a little different? Yeah, I did that a little bit. I, yeah. You know, sometimes, though, that just caused me to think more, and that's, that I definitely did not need to do that. I thought enough, and I think enough as a player, as a person, and, you know, sometimes you can overload yourself and drive yourself crazy if, if you, if you do too much of that. No doubt. Hey, buckle up. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. When we come back, we will talk with Matt Holt, the Husker Video Coordinator. That's coming up next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska researchers are designing the next generation of roadside steel barriers through an industry partnership with Traffic's devices. This partnership has produced the Delta Crash Cushion, a simplistic, effective way to keep drivers safe on highways. This barrier is vital for roadside safety and significantly improves the chances motorists will be able to walk away from roadside collisions. Bell Lining extended right side, Scoggins. She'll step into a three. You betcha! Career high 20th point for Ashley Scoggin and a timeout for Maryland. Hey, Nebraska fans, Huskers Women's Hoops is off to Columbus to take on the 21st ranked Buckeyes this Thursday. Pre game coverage begins at 5 45 p.m. Central with tip off at 6. Tune into your local affiliate or by visiting Huskers.com or using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he's so cold. The furnace is out again. But wait, he sees an opening. SOS, SOS, he screams and calls 391-2336. SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer. Boy, he made the right call today as SOS is already on the way. SOS is your trustworthy company since 1950, and with Luxair, you get free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. Call 391-2336 or visit SOSHVAC.com today. Attention anyone standing near a mud puddle. Trucks and boxes back, so take cover. The Nebraska Lottery's most popular scratch game is roaring down the road again. And this year we're giving away eight blue 2022 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Flex Fuel trucks. So buy a $2 Trucks and Bucks ticket today. You could win a new Ford F-150 and make a real splash in your neighborhood. Ford F-150 is a registered trademark owned and licensed by Ford Motor Company. Top prize odds, one in 336,000. 
to Wiltshire, right side to Bryce, spins right off a screen from Walker, shoots a long three, got it, Bryce McGowan's. The Huskers Radio Network is your source for wall-to-wall -wall Nebraska basketball coverage, and it continues on Wednesday as Bryce McGowan's and the Huskers host Minnesota at PBA. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 p.m. Central with tip-off at 7. Tune in to your local affiliate or by visiting Huskers.com or using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org and thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres Solutions for Every Field. It's our men's basketball show for the week, and delighted to be joined now by Matt Holt, who is the video coordinator for Husker Basketball. And Matt, great to have you with us tonight. And when I say video coordinator, tell the folks what that what that entails. Greg, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, just a little bit about my background and what I do here. Uh, video coordinator means, you know, for example, we play Minnesota Wednesday. I've kind of already moved on to Iowa. Uh, just kind of staying a step ahead, breaking down the, the next opponents, probably the last five to seven games, um, and getting with coach and whoever scouted is to uh, go over the game plan, some of the keys that I've seen, and then uh, let them have at it. Now, you are from uh, you're back east, right? You went to Northeastern College. Tell me a little bit about your background and, and what kind of got you uh, interested in doing this and being a part of, of college basketball. Yeah, so this is actually uh, my 11th year coaching. Um, I went to Northeastern University in Boston. I'm from Providence originally, which is just about 45 minutes from Boston. Um, was a Division three assistant for a year. Was a Division two assistant for two years. Uh, and then was fortunate enough to go back to my alma mater, Northeastern, and then uh, been out here now for this is my fifth season. Fifth season with Husker basketball. So you were you kind of made your way through a transition, right, with with coaches here. I did. Yeah, I was here with uh, Coach Miles originally for two years, and you know uh, had a good recommendation from him when when Coach Horberg got the job here, and he and I kind of hit it off, and I was able and fortunate to stay on here. Well, okay, let's get let's do a little deeper dive into the video coordinator part of this. T tell tell everybody a little bit about what you cut up for the coaches. Do you cut up just offensive sets? De do you have a defensive reel and offensive reel? How do you break all that up? Yeah, so we have um, kind of a bunch of options within within the game. So I'll break down the entire game, every possession um, of the opponents last five to seven, depending on um, proximity of when we play them, how close it is together. Um, you know, for example, Minnesota was a little bit more extensive, um, and Iowa will be too, and, and just because we haven't played them yet. Um, so what I'll do is I'll break down those possessions. I'll write down my notes and make smaller edits for, for coach to look at in terms of personnel tendencies, uh, offensive and defensive tendencies. Um, and then whoever scouted is, you know, for example, uh, Coach Linzer has Minnesota. He'll do more of a deeper dive, and I'll, I'll kind of try to hit coach beforehand uh, with some smaller things before Coach Glenter will get into it. Again, we're visiting Matt Holt, who's the video coordinator for Husker Basketball, fifth season on the Nebraska basketball staff. Matt, last year at this time, Huskers were just coming out of the COVID thing, and you had to play all those games in a short amount of time. That had to be almost a nightmare segment uh, scenario for you to deal with, wasn't it? Yeah, Greg, it was really crazy. Um, you know, when you're in it, you don't really realize it as much. It's oh, You're always on the go. Um, but then looking at things after the fact, uh, just what a crazy stretch that was. And I think one of the stats that they 
they kind of had shown across the screen was that we we played as many games as all but three or four NBA teams or something in that stretch. So it was definitely um, almost like a, a sneak peek at what the NBA life would be like. Yeah, that that's not that's not easy to do. All right, uh, do you get involved in recruiting at all? Do do recruiting videos come across your your desk at all? Do you help coordinate any of that? I do. Uh, I do some of that. Um, I would say more so what we do with recruiting is um, we look at our video playbook and we try to show our recruits as they come in. You know, we, We've had to do this more because of Zoom, um, but we've kind of carried it over now back to in-person that we'll show them our style of play, how they fit in our system, um, kind of where we see where we see them in our offense. Very good. Matt, how much has, has technology changed in the video world in the last five, six years? I mean, there's always kind of new gadgets, uh, new, new ways to, to drop videos different places. What, what kind of changes do you have to keep up with on that? Greg, it's, it's really interesting. You know, it, it, things have changed so much since I started. You know, we, we used to have to, when I was at, at Northeastern, we would have to send out DVDs to a third party, and they would send them to the corresponding schools. Uh, when I was a D3 assistant, we were using VHS tapes, um, and now it's all digital. Everything is, you know, click of the button, you can download a game in 10 minutes and have it broken up in about 15. So things, things have changed uh, for the better, in my opinion. Yeah, amazing stuff. This interests me too, Matt. You know, I, I, everybody gets to see, when you're in the conference playing a Big Ten play, all, every game everybody can watch on TV pretty much. But you might play some of those teams early in the season. Is it harder to obtain video for some of the non-conference teams that maybe don't get on TV as much? Yeah, absolutely. And that's where, you know, we have to be creative and, and look if those smaller schools are, you know, showing their, their their games online, streaming on their website, anything like that, where a lot of times they'll charge you to buy a, a day pass to stream the game on your computer. Um, and and we'll, we'll have to do that at times and just be creative and find ways to, to get the game if it's not necessarily on cable. You mentioned building the cut-ups for, for the coaches. Do the players ask for some of that? Does a Trey McGowan's or somebody come to you and go, hey, can you put together a reel for what I was doing a year ago to see maybe if my jumper or my release point has changed at all? Yeah, we actually, um, you know, we utilize Huddle, which is based here in Lincoln, and, yep. and they're great. Each of our guys has a Huddle account, and they're able to watch all of their clips from every practice and every game. Um, and, and guys are really, really good about getting with Coach. Uh, to watch their clips and how they can improve. Do they have to do that on their phone? Do they get are they given a laptop, a tablet? What? How do they access that? So the good thing about that is, you know, Huddle's platform is great, where they can they can do it on their phone, they can do it on their laptop, they can do whatever they want. Um, so their their access is not limited to any certain device. They can do it on on pretty much anything they have. Fantastic. Matt, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. I mean, giving us kind of a peek behind the curtain of, of some of the things that go on with, with Husker basketball that we may not know a whole lot about. Let's get this. Let's get some wins here coming down the stretch on this season. I hope so, Greg. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. There is Matt Holt, his fifth season as a video coordinator for Husker basketball, joining us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, we're back with some final thoughts for the hour next. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. This is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and Bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades, and that commitment has paid off. 
with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See agent Matt Moorhead or Joanne Shamanick in Lincoln or Scott Jeffers in McCook today. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. At Union, at Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. We're back, Sports Highly here on a Monday night. It's our men's basketball radio show for the hour. Our Sports Highly hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. Oscars back in action Wednesday night at home at Pinnacle Bank Arena. It will be an 8 o'clock tip. I know you all love those 8 o'clock tip-offs. Uh, that's what the Huskers will have. 7 o'clock pregame coverage with Ken Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. And then Super Bowl Sunday. The Huskers will play at Iowa. That will be a 1 o'clock game with a noon pregame show. Huskers on the road for that one. The season coming down a stretch. Coach mentioned earlier in the hour, the Huskers have eight games left in the season, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's almost a third of the schedule still left for this team. And, boy, you just want the, the ball to bounce right for the guys, and hopefully that happens Wednesday night when they entertain the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Coming up tomorrow night here on Sports Sunday, it'll be our women's show for the week. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had Coach Williams in studio. We've had... And they had the COVID shutdown for a week or so. And then that batch of games that they play, there just wasn't a night to get her in. But she will be in tomorrow night for hour number two of our program. We'll talk about that team, which is um, in a stretch of three road games. That played at Maryland yesterday. They'll play at Ohio State on Thursday night at Illinois on Saturday. So Coach Williams in studio tomorrow night. Also, former baseball coach, Husker Hall of Famer, Darren Erstad will be here tomorrow. We'll talk about the passing of his old baseball coach, John Sanders, who passed away last week down in the Atlanta air area. Thanks to Tim and all of you for being a part of this one. Have a great night. Back with another show coming your way tomorrow. Good night. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. United Healthcare believes small businesses are vital to our economy and an important part of our communities. Join United Healthcare in celebrating small businesses. I'm Rob Broomfield, United Healthcare of Nebraska CEO and a graduate of the University of Nebraska. We want to recognize your small business with the spotlight on small business sweepstakes. Winners receive radio interviews, social media recognition, and more. To enter, visit huskers.com front slash spotlight. United Healthcare, proud partner of Husker Sports. You're in the driver's seat with Woodhouse. Shop, finance, and buy your next vehicle your way. 
From the comfort of your home at Woodhouse.com, one of our 19 dealerships, or a combination of both, it's that easy. Plus, offering the most wanted new makes and leading pre-owned models, your next vehicle is on the lot or on its way. Shop confidently with the Woodhouse team today. Serving customers and communities since 1975, this is Woodhouse. You're in the driver's seat with Woodhouse. Shop, finance, and buy your next vehicle your way. From the comfort of your home at Woodhouse.com, one of our 19 dealerships, or a combination of both, it's that easy. Plus, offering the most wanted new makes and leading pre-owned models, your next vehicle is on the lot or on its way. Shop confidently with the Woodhouse team today. Serving customers and communities since 1975. 